Our collective of more than 300,000 citizen scientists covers a lot of topics and fields of popular research. There are many things we can affect, things we can do something about, like pushing forward on electric and plasma universe cosmology, like we've now seen from Princeton, NASA, and Berkeley as well, geophysics accolades such as students winning national championships, the discovery of a sun-earthquake relationship, the development of an electric earthquake forecasting system, and the tracking of electric earthquakes by international collaborations and satellites. But we also track things that we cannot affect. Here are the top five natural threats that keep us up at night. Number five, gamma ray burst in the Milky Way. While various space missions routinely document gamma bursts from distant galaxies, we have thankfully not yet seen a gamma ray burst in the Milky Way. If it happened today, we would have major ozone loss and deadly ultraviolet increases at the surface for years, as well as the potential for photochemical smog and nitric acid rain due to the reactions with upper atmospheric particles. Scientists have recently discovered a pair of close orbiting stars that are close to going nova in our galaxy. It is one of a number of potential gamma sources seen lurking in our neighborhood. It could still be thousands of years away from happening, still a blink in cosmic time, but it is a constant, unpredictable threat in both the backs of our minds and in the cold depth of space. Number 4. Earth's Magnetic Reversal The primary cosmic shield of our planet is dropping in strength as the magnetic poles themselves have accelerated from their normal wander. While the actual shifting of the magnetic poles does not present much risk other than the marginal increase in photon energy reaching the surface, which is why this major event is down at number 4 but it sets a scarier stage for all of the top three as changes to Earth's electromagnetic interface with the universe can affect everything below it, since we are not only bombarded with electromagnetic waves, but we orbit the sun in a sea of electric particles called the solar wind. So let's go to those top three. Number three, grand solar minimum. Large, crackling sunspots producing the X-rays needed for upper atmospheric jet strength, the particle flux for global electric circuit capacitance, not here. Without it, we begin to see major extremes in the weather. Heat, cold, flood, drought, hail, polar vortex weakenings, jet stream blocking, and the modulation of cloud-level ionization. In 2018, we dropped into a very low sunspot minimum. The last sunspot maximum was very weak, and it was preceded by another weak solar minimum. This 12 to 15 years or so of weakness is already showing its face in the form of a record cold and snow sticking around, increased hailstone size, and extremes in precipitation like water as far as the eye can see in one of the driest deserts on Earth. These are just an appetizer of what the grand solar minimum would bring. More importantly, the weaker sun and weaker magnetic field of Earth from number four both allow more cosmic rays into the atmosphere. Cosmic rays affect lightning, wind, clouds, telluric currents, and magma viscosity, as well as having an appreciable effect on pressure cells, geopotential height, surface temperatures, and the entire vertical column. The last grand minimum brought famine, uncertain weather, and million death winters in Europe and Asia, and it's likely coming again this century. Number two, major solar storms. While sunspots will decrease in the grand minimum when it happens this century, we will still have intermittent solar flares, and grand minimum could still be 10 to 30 years away. A rogue sunspot group, which do appear to have peppered the last grand minimum period, can appear in just a few hours, produce solar flares, and within a few hours more, powerful shock waves could be taking down Earth's grids. NASA's conservative estimate is trillions in damage and potentially months without power on national to global scales. This is why we watch the sun every day because not having electricity for that long could mean a complete collapse. Number one, volcanic winter. Let me put this simply. When Pinatubo blew in 1991, it dropped the global temperatures by an entire degree, more than the entirety of the well-known global warming to date. It is technically a VEI-6 rated eruption, but on the very low end of the scale. Earth is considered well overdue for a large VEI-6, if not a VEI-7, which could completely derail the climate in a time when the polar oceans are chilled and freshened from melted ice and ripe for a freeze-over. The sun is dropping intensity already to the point of record low thermospheric temperatures. Cosmic rays are going to increase cloud albedo, and they are also able to trigger explosive volcanic eruptions via their effects on magma viscosity. Earth's magnetic field reversal leaves us more open to anything the sun throws our way, 
and it lets in more of those cosmic rays. The weakening sun is disrupting the normal 11-year oscillations in the upper stratosphere and letting in more cosmic rays. Cosmic rays cool the planet by cloud production, which is more powerful than most realize. They increase the risk of volcanic eruptions and can touch every aspect of our environment, including effects on human health. With both feet in the research realm, we keep both eyes trained on these things that keep us up at night. We're already at the modern cosmic ray maximum. The sun is changing. The Earth's magnetic field is changing. We are way overdue for a major volcanic eruption. And you can learn more with the links below the video. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.